Hey, I can barely hear you. I think your gain's too low. Hey, it's John from Adults Have Toys 2. And oh, geez, no, lower. Lower than that. Ah, geez, come on. There's got to be a better way. Well, good thing there is one. Let's check it out. Hey, it's John from Adults Have Toys 2. If you record audio, I'm sure you've come across this problem. You get back to work on your project and you discover you accidentally had the gain too high or too low. Too much gain and all of your audio is clipped and sounds like trash. You could try to fix it in post, but even if you can recover some of it, you're gonna end up sounding robotic. On the other end, if you set your gain too low, you can barely hear your audio. You can try to boost the volume of your track but there's just not enough data to recover your audio. And now you're picking up absolutely everything in the background. You're then left with a decision of either re-recording everything, which might not be possible, or just fixing it the best you can and hope that nobody notices. One thing you can do is be very careful when setting your levels and be sure to either monitor the audio live as you capture it, or be sure to check everything before you wrap up. Or you can just get a 32-bit float audio recorder like this Zoom F2. Until now, I've been using the Zoom H1N, which is just a one away from being a terrible name. Most recorders have a bit depth of either 16 or 24 bit fixed point. The simple explanation is that the bit depth gives you a window of amplitudes or loudness that you can record. The gain lets you set where that window is. So if you imagine all the possible loudness levels on a line, then the fixed point bit depth determines how much of that line is recorded, or the dynamic range, and the gain determines what part of that line is recorded. So 16-bit audio can capture 96 decibels of dynamic range and would look like this. 24-bit audio has a significant jump of 144 decibels of dynamic range and could be represented like this. Now, let's take a look at 32-bit float. You would imagine that the 32-bit audio would capture a little bit more. And that would be true of 32-bit fixed point audio with a dynamic range of 192 decibels. But 32-bit float uses floating point numbers and exponents and some complicated math to capture 1,528 decibels of dynamic range. This number is significantly larger than the range from the quietest noise dampened room to the loudest explosion. So what that means for you is that there's really no reason to set gain at all. You're pretty much capturing everything up to the limits of the microphone. Of course, speakers also have a dynamic range, so you might have to do a little bit of work in post to normalize the volume to how you'd like. But the amount of sound that you could recover is nothing short of amazing. Here, let me show you. So until now, my process would be to set up the camera and then pull out my H1N, turn it on and set my mic where I want it to be. And then I would adjust the gain to make sure that the bars were right about the middle. So I have a little bit of headroom. And then record a test play back that test. If that sounds good, then start it all over again and do a recording. But of course, silly me, I forgot my headphones. So all I can really do is listen to the speaker on here and hope it's good enough. But now with my Zoom F2, all I need to do is turn it on and press record. That's it. So if I want to shoot a scene, that's one less thing I have to worry about. So to show the range of this recorder, I'm going to go ahead and record a scene. In this scene, I'll have both of the recorders going and do some quiet things, some mid-level things, and some loud things so you can see how the recorders can handle it. I'll adjust it in post as best I can and I'll switch back and forth between the recorders so you can listen to the difference. Let's get started. The time specters know exactly where we are, but they don't know when we are. Our window of opportunity is small. But if we make this work, we'll be able to get rid of them forever. First, we need to get the top down to get a clear view of the sky. The chrono disruptor won't work unless we can see what we're doing. You gotta be ready. Once we get started, there's no turning back. Let's go.
Here we go. Three, two, one. And we're launching. There it is. We did it. We got them. Ha <laughs> ha. You can just mail the Oscar to my house. So let me show you what we're working with here. This here is the file open in Adobe Edition that we just looked at. This is from the H1N. You can see the quiet section, the mid-level sections, and the loud sections. So our quiet sections. But they don't know when we are. Our mid-level. Up down. To get it. And our loud. Three, two, one. Now let's move over to the F2. Quite a bit different. Here are our quiet sections, which are very quiet. Our mid-level to get a clear view of the sky and our loud. Here we go. Three. So still a little bit of clipping there. Let's go back over here to the H1N and let's see what happens if we try to make this a bit louder. I'm Spectres and know exactly where we are, but they don't know when we are. You can see all this noise in here that crops up. Same thing. If we try to come over to the loud section and I want to try to bring that down a bit, You'll see all of that is clipped off. Everything past here, all that data is gone. So even if I bring it down to a manageable level, three, two, it still all sounds clipped. Let's go over to the F2 with 32-bit float. If I take this quiet section here and make it loud, you'll see there's not nearly as much noise in there. Exactly where we are, but they don't know when we are. There's still some, but not nearly as bad. And if I come over here to the loud section and I bring it down, you'll see there's actually data outside of that range there. I think I'm clipping a little bit here just because I hit the limits of the microphone. Here we go. Three, two, one, and... But you can see how much you can recover. And I think that's pretty amazing. This workflow here is super easy to use. And if you're using Adobe Audition, super easy. Uh, but there is some software that comes with the F2. And uh, while I haven't tried that one, it lets you be able to access this magic of 32-bit float. We're launching. There it is. So that's all about 32-bit float in general. But what do I think of the Zoom F2 itself? Overall, I really like it. It's super compact, easy to place, easy to conceal. The controls are super simple. I do have a couple of annoyances. Build quality overall is very good with solid metal input and output ports, but the battery door does feel a little bit thin. It feels very secure. Only time will tell how durable it is in the long run. The controls are easy to work by feel, but there's no way to tell if it's recording without looking at the lights or looking at the app. This paired with the fact it takes a little bit for it to boot up means you could possibly hit record while it's still booting up and not realizing that you're not recording anything. A small vibration motor could fix this, giving you tactile feedback when it finishes booting and when it starts or stops recording. Also, while you can review your last recording on the device, you need to go into the app to go back and hear previous recordings. It would be nice to have a long press or something to be able to change tracks on the device itself. This is the Bluetooth version, and it'll connect to Android or iOS via Bluetooth in the Zoom F2 app. The app allows you to start and stop recording remotely, and place marks in the recording. The app is also the only way you can see what number audio file you're on. I tend to start my recordings by saying audio number whatever, which makes it easier for me to match up my video and audio. Of course, if you're syncing everything with timecode, then this becomes a non-issue. Despite the annoyances though, the freedom of just setting and forgetting my audio recorder is priceless, and I'm looking forward to this feature becoming more commonplace. So this thing kind of seems like magic, but remember, there are some limitations. Getting a lot of plosives and you're getting a lot of noise into the mic and pushing a lot of air into it, it's still not going to sound good even if you're trying to adjust it. Also, you are limited by the quality of your microphone. So if you have a low quality microphone, your audio is going to be low quality. Another thing to consider is that the file sizes are a good amount bigger than what you would find with 24-bit audio. But we're talking on the order of megabytes, not gigabytes. Also, you'll need to make sure that you have software that could be able to handle 32-bit float files like me using Adobe Audition. I'm gonna start using this as my main recorder in future videos. Hopefully it continues to work as well as it has, but if anything changes, you'll be first to know. But until next time, never stop having fun.